great things happening in Indianapolis are not accidental. There's an unusual, close, cooperative working relationship between the public and private sector, between the governmental leaders of Indianapolis community and the business leaders of this area. There is emerging within the business community itself a new leadership that has verb, vitality, and imagination and saying, we have a great community, let's get on and tell others about it so that no longer will Indianapolis have a bland image, but we'll be able to tell others as well as ourselves that we have a unique quality of life in this great city. It's been well chronicled about how Indianapolis is a sleepy little village. So Indianapolis had not yet made the transition into a dynamic community. 1965, John Barton was the mayor and brought a group of civic leaders together and they were frustrated. They wanted to move Indianapolis ahead and they didn't think it was, it was going to happen. So they looked at organizations around the country and the Greater uh, Pittsburgh Allegheny Alliance was a, a good one that they copied in which they brought the leadership of that whole area and region together uh, along with the political officials and said, how can we move our city ahead? So that was the template that the GIPC was formed. Gypsy has worked through task forces and that's been kind of its, uh, its claim to fame and one of its successful uh, approaches. Um, Indianapolis needed water resources. Today, we probably need them again. Uh, but the planning for Eagle Creek Park and Reservoir was one of the initial activities of Gypsy back in the late 60s. Then take uh, Dick Luger. Uh, some significant efforts uh, early on is that Luger thought there would, could be a better way the local government could deliver the services and um, speak to, the, to people's needs and collect taxes. Uh, that was um, looked at through a government reorganization task force, which uh, ultimately led to the creation of Unigo. Hudnut came in 76. Uh, Hudnut uh, uh, also had a lot of energy. We saw the Progress Committee as something, uh, uh, as a vehicle of leadership. The success of Gypsy is uh, tremendous. I mean, it's had an incredibly positive impact on our community. The response to the desegregation order that happened uh, in the late 70s in our community. Cities across the country were, had, were having riots and, and um, as a part of the forced busing issue. And we wanted to avoid that here in Indianapolis. And Mayor Hudnett asked the Progress Committee to take on that task and to ensure that we would have a smooth integration of busing in Indianapolis. And, and largely because of Gypsy, we had that. We build a 12 foot by 12 foot model of downtown and invite the public to come in and dream about the future of this city. And we invited all the developers, everyone who had a plan, whether it was historic preservation or a storefront or the dreams about Wright River State Park or the unfolding of IUPUI, came in and explained it and it was neutral ground. And the enthusiasm started. People were saying, my God, that's possible in our city because we didn't have a lot of opinion of ourselves. It's not negative, but we were kind of aug shucks and we had we were developing a little more pride in our city. And then once you uh, do things and you start implementing these things, uh, Indianapolis was still the best kept secret. During the time that I was chair uh, under the Ballard administration, uh, we were particularly proud of our involvement in the uh, referendum for the now Sydney and Lois Eskenazi Hospital. We were the first organization to stand up and say, we think it is so important to build a new hospital uh, for people in need in this community. And so we asked all our members to advocate within their own organizations and their own networks. And uh, we, we played a fairly important role in that. You know, Gypsy is special because it is a convener. Uh, it has changed a lot. In the early years, it was really about bricks and mortar. So it was behind the convention center and a number of other uh, brick and mortar projects. And then as the years progressed, uh, it wasn't really needed for that so much as it was needed for uh, structural issues, infrastructure issues in the social infrastructure of the community. So uh, it became much, uh, much less a brick and mortar uh, organization and more a, a conceptual organization. Mayor Peterson, uh, during the campaign, said that during the first month of January in 
2000 that we would create a, a summit uh, to just speak to diversity and uh, our community and the citizens and there became uh, this luncheon on diversity um, and now uh, still being celebrated each year the mayor's celebration of diversity that probably a couple of thousand people come it's tremendous but but i attribute a lot of our success for not having some of the racial problems that uh, other communities have had because we have this race relations leadership network that meets monthly. You don't see sort of the animosity and the back and forth um, in, in Annapolis. I, I attribute a part of that to this race relations network and Gypsy uh, continuing. Uh, there was a, a great need to for us to be uh, as such one community and we display that Hoosier hospitality or in Annapolis hospitality. The last uh, seven years, seven and a half years has been a great administration. We've done some challenging uh, things in this city. I've seen a lot of development in community, lots of business growth. Plan 2020 has been exciting to see a uh, new redevelopment, uh, plan for the community moving forward for the new generation and getting newer people in, uh, that weren't even born perhaps when I first got involved engaged in our city to make sure that the quality of life for all the residents is where they should be for everyone. I think just keeping that cross-section of persons involved, focused on in Annapolis, how can we become better? We certainly don't want to become complacent in all that we've accomplished. We also have to be flexible enough that we address what's going on in our community. Most cities in the country have tried to emulate Indianapolis and the, what went on here in the 1970s and 80s. But the success doesn't come close to what got accomplished here in Indianapolis because the entire community got involved through Gypsy in dialoguing about problems, seeking solutions, and then having those solutions implemented. And they're just political forces that cause that not to be possible in other cities. I think uh, Gypsy, like uh, all organizations, must continue to evolve in order to be relevant. It has uh, over these 50 years, and I suspect it will continue to, and certainly I think those involved in it uh, are, are committed to see that that happens. You know, I just think Indianapolis is very blessed to have an organization like Great Indianapolis Progress Committee. Men and women willing to come to the table, spend their time, and, and roll their sleeves up and, and volunteer. Uh, their knowledge uh, and sometimes their resources to make this a better place. Now it's 50 years. I think the spirit of coming together in a nonpartisan way of saying Indianapolis is important. We have to invest in our future if we want one. We're going to put our energy and our money and our resources uh, to bear uh, to move this city ahead. And I think the 50 years of the Progress Committee has been involved in helping to steward that partnership along uh, can be proud of itself and uh, there's a lot of success out there. Doesn't mean that the job's done, there's more to do. Mm -hmm.